Hello, welcome to Texas Style Cuisine. Glad you joined us today. Today I'm going to do a Swiss steak for you in our Dutch oven. We're breaking out the black pots again. A uh, little musical entertainment. Thank you. I can hear that in the background. That's my dear friend Jeff Gore, and this is his wife's recipe for Swiss steak. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Texas Style Cuisine. start on our Swiss steak first thing we're gonna do is is we're gonna brown our our steak and what this actually is is it's a chuck roast uh, they market these as steak fingers steak ribs beef ribs and they're not they're a chuck steak that's been cut into strips where they look kind of like a, a rib rib size but they're not a rib anyways I've got those I've got them chopped up and what we're gonna do is is just start dropping these down into our flour now, my flour is uh, lightly seasoned, not a whole lot in there, but it has salt, pepper, and garlic in it. And I'm just going to coat these lightly, and then I'm going to get those into our uh, pan of uh, hot oil, and I'm going to brown them. So what we're doing here is, is we're braising today. All this is braising. And, of course, this flour will help thicken up our sauce that's in with our meat, and it'll all be fine. All right, that's looking good. Now we'll start getting it over into our oil. All right, now we're gonna drop in our meat and start browning it up real good. Now I could leave these bigger chunks, but one reason I didn't is it's because I felt like um, they'll cook a little faster this way by going to small pieces. I know you can go, sometimes Donna uses the entire chuck roast in there. Uh, she'll use bigger pieces. But I didn't want to be cooking all afternoon long today. So I'm going to try to do it just like this. See how it works. Just let that brown. All right, I'm going to start seeing if we can turn some of these yet. Yeah, they're not a dark brown, but they're starting to brown up some. Let them sit there a little bit longer, get a little bit hotter. All right, now, we have our skillet browning really good. And another way to do this is by using the lid to your Dutch oven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brown some more of the meat in my Dutch oven lid and show you all how that's done. All right, now what I've done is I've just turned my Dutch oven lid upside down on top of my uh, starter chimney. And this grease is getting hot on the lid, starting to pop. And I'm just going to oil these up and sit them on top of this lid and let them brown and basically use it as an additional skillet. All right, this meat is looking nice and brown in this first skillet. So I'm going to take it and just start dropping it into our Dutch oven. Oh, yeah, they're nice and crusty. Now, this is about four pounds of chuck roast that I've got cooked up today. And, of course, I normally don't use metal to 
prongs in my cast iron, but I couldn't find my my uh, rubber ones, silicone ones today. So I grabbed these, trying not to scratch it too much though. I don't have to. All right, these are about ready. They're on the lid also. So I'm gonna get those off and get those into the, uh, the Dutch oven. Okay, those are looking good. We'll get them into our... All right, now I'm going to get the last of my meat and get it into my Dutch oven. All right, all my meat's in there. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tomato mixture, and all we did was we took um, three pounds of Roma tomatoes, a nice large onion, salt, pepper, garlic, and it's probably a um, about two teaspoons of salt, same amount of pepper, about a teaspoon of garlic. We have all those in there, and it was fresh garlic actually. So it was about about four nice cloves of fresh garlic, and we put them in the food processor and blended them up. So as I was saying, I think earlier is that it's more of a tomato sauce is what we've made to go in there. So now we're just going to pour our tomato sauce across our four pounds of, of chuck that we've browned. So it's going in. Oh, got a whole tomato there. Didn't get blended up good. It'll cook away though in the process, but that's looking awful good. And then I'm going to add Worcestershire sauce to it. I'm going to put quite a bit in there. I'm going to get maybe a half a cup. So it's going to have a good amount of that in there for a good flavor. And one thing I'm going to do different that Donna doesn't do is, is I have some mushrooms to put in there. You could use any kind of mushrooms you want to. Um, just happened today up at the grocery store, they had some shiitake and some cremini mushrooms uh, that were on sale. So I grabbed those and I'm just going to drop a nice carton of mushrooms in with it. They're going to render some juice also, some flavor in there. But now, that's ready to go, and I'm going to get this back on my on my fire to get going. Now, some of y'all know that I have a, uh, a fire pit that normally I do my Dutch oven cooking in. And normally I would have done that tonight also, but we have a real strong wind blowing, kind of a, a late winter storm. Winter's hanging on uh, here in South Texas. It's strange. It's not that cold, but it's in the 50s today. And... Uh, the wind was terrible, so I knew if, if I was standing out there, the wind noise would be really tough. So I'm using my my uh, fireplace in the in the outdoor kitchen. But anyways, this is a 12 inch Dutch oven. So to get that 350 degrees that we're looking for, remember you double the diameter of your pot with the number of coals. So I have a 12 inch pot, so I'm going to use 24 coals, and I'm going to divide those in half. Normally in the in the standard size baker, what I do is I take two off the bottom and put them on the top. Uh, today I'm not going to do that because we're roasting in this. I'm going to go ahead and leave um, 12 on the bottom, but I'm going to take an extra four charcoals and put up on the lid and just get a little more heat because of the height of this pit uh, or this pot. It's a little bit bigger. So we're going to do that, but we'll get these going and be right back with you. Now, so I've got my, my charcoal going, and I'm just going to dump it out. See how many coals I got. Oh yeah, I got a good amount of coals there. They're looking nice. And I'm going to bring my pot over here. And what I'm going to do is, again, 12 on the bottom, and I'm going to go 16 on top. I put four extra on a roaster oven. Just use a pair of metal tongs is what I use. And I'm just going to come around here and set out 16 pieces of charcoal and I'm going to put them right around the outer edge of my Dutch oven. So there's two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There's my twelve. Oven goes on top and I'm going to tuck them just barely underneath the edge. Remember, when we're working with Dutch ovens, if you put the charcoals right in the center, it concentrates that heat in the center of the pot, 
and there's a good chance of burning. We put them out on the outer edge, the ring, that's going to radiate up the sides and on the bottom both. We've got that one going. That's looking nice. We've got our 12. Now I'm going to go with 16 up on top. And we've got 16 up around the outside edge of our Dutch oven going. Now, this is going to go for about two hours. So I'm going to start another chimney of charcoal going because I'll need some more for it. And remember, we, we rotate our pot every 15 minutes. You don't want to get any hot spots. So I'm going to use my lid lifter. I'm going to turn my pot clockwise, one quarter turn. Then I'll turn the lid back to its original position. That way the bottom is moving around the heat and so is the top. So the heat is never concentrated in one particular area. So we got, it, got our watch set, 15 minutes, we'll come back and rotate our pots. All right, it's been another 15 minutes. So I am gonna pick up my pot. I'm gonna give it a quarter of a turn. And take my lid, twist it back to the original position. Okay, well now, we've moved the hot spots around. Still cooking good in our Dutch ovens. All right, have it off the fire now. Let's check out, see how our Swiss steak turned out. Be careful not to put too much ash up in there. And there we go. It looks nice and tender and it's smelling good. So, have a bowl of rice here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to scoop up some of this meat with my mushrooms. Put that up on top. Let it soak down into that rice. And that looks like a great dish. All right, there we go. Swiss steak with rice in our Dutch oven with our friend Donna Gore giving us a recipe. We really appreciate that. And we appreciate y'all tuning in once again. Thank y'all for coming. We'd appreciate it if you would subscribe our channel. If you enjoyed the video today, go down there and give us a thumbs up. Let us know you liked it. Come back and see us again sometime on Texas Talk Cuisine. Sitting by the wagon when the sun come up this morning. Bacon, eggs, and coffee, biscuits, and beans. Cookie strikes the bell and he rings the world a warning. How them boys put food away beats all I've ever seen.